you know, I'm, I, I have so many questions about how the audience has been reacting to all this, but I want to stick with this lens metaphor and widen the lens here uh, on the discussion of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So 72% of business executives in the United States are white. So companies are hiring diversity officers to make their workplaces more inclusive, and that's great. But what's your advice to companies that don't focus on more diverse boardrooms and C-suites, um, diversity at the highest level? Yeah, I mean, this is to me um, a no brainer, <laughs> which is that the board is making some really important decisions. They're really looking at what you're bringing back and they need to also be questioning and asking through an inclusion lens. They also need to understand the future and what is happening, even generational diversity. Or if you think about the ways that we're starting to change how we think about gender, all of that needs to be part of the conversations. If not, we're just going to replicate what we already have. Um, it is also true that we will continue to choose leadership um, that is reflective of that board or reflective of the, the CEOs who are already in position. So you have to bring that kind of inclusive thinking and working into every level of an operation if there is going to be a shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have an, uh, an, an audience question that gets at something. It, this is not going to surprise you. This, this audience question comes from Rachel McKernan from Texas. Um, and Rachel asks, how do you find more diverse candidates for roles with a limited candidate pool? And, and I love this question. It's a great question because um, we sometimes hear, and I'm sure you've heard this, uh, but we sometimes hear um, white managers say that they can't find qualified diverse candidates especially for management positions. Um, your response. Hey, I used to be like, yeah, right. Um, but then I started going, yeah, yeah, you're right. You can't. And that is because many of us have very limited networks. And so you are looking within this very limited world. And so the first thing I would do is I would say, to our um, to our per, to our participant, are you sure, or is that just your understanding of who's out there? Because we all know when they used to say that about black directors, or they used to say that about black actors, and it turns out there are many of them, right? So first, part of this work is to think about the systemic barriers that are preventing us and the social setups that are preventing us from even knowing who people are and what is capable what people are capable of so i think that's the first thing is like really question whether the pipeline is as limited as you think okay the second thing is that we've been doing stuff like how are we going to expand the networks for our um for our executives right so we've done like a program where we invite um people from underrepresented groups who are executives uh, to a dinner with our executives and they talk about diversity and inclusion and some very uncomfortable things but we've actually hired people off of those dinners because you start to become connected you know a little wine also helps but you start yeah, to be connected say. with people <laughs> You loosen up, you find out about their life journey. They find out about yours. Then when you have an opening, you go, oh, let me call so-and-so. So first of all, we all do. And I'm not just talking about white folks. Everybody's got to ask themselves, if I invited the 10 most important people in your life to dinner at your house, if you had to do that, and I'm not talking about your family, just friends, who would be at yeah. that table? Because there's a little bit of understanding there about just how broad your network is. Having said that, there are definitely ways that racism, discrimination, lack of opportunity, all that has made it harder for certain groups of people to be well represented in certain industries. That's no lie. Um, mm -hmm. And so then the question is, are you prepared to, one, take folks who are obviously very capable and have explored that and, and demonstrated that, 
and bring them in to these industries and do the kind of support they need in order for them to be successful because setting people up for failure is not the way to do it. Um, or, and are you willing to put and invest in pipeline programs uh, where you're starting to move some of those blocks and those barriers away so that people can even know about a job? Jonathan, do you know how some people don't even know certain jobs exist? That has always blown my mind. I'm like, this is a fabulous job and folks don't even know it exists, right? So it's almost like, how do you open the door to see the folks who are out there? And how do you open the door for the people who are out there to see what exists?